Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the Lightroom Blog channel. It's Tuesday, so it's Lightroom Tuesday and we will talk about something in Lightroom, the metadata panel. Folks, I know that the library module is not people's favorite module by any means stretch of the imagination. And everything that's out there seems to be concentrating on, ooh, the sexy develop module. But if you can't find your files, they're no good to you. You may as well not have shot them. You need to be able to find them. So we're going to talk a little bit about the metadata panel, which is where you can look at metadata, both metadata that's put in by you, that's created by the camera, and that is created by plugins that you have used with Lightroom itself. And I will talk about a plugin that I've created as well, which currently isn't available because, as it turns out, the add-ons website decided that it won't work past Lightroom 5.99. So I'm going to go fix that soon and get that up online for you. But you can have a look at what it does in a second. So the metadata panel here is situated on the right-hand side of library. Uh, at the top here, you've got this thing that says default, which is the preset uh, selector. Now, there is a configurator that you can get from Jeffrey Friedel that lets you add your own versions of these. Uh, so you've got the default one, which is here. So the default one is all of this information that's here. So it's showing a mixture of IPTC and EXIF data. IPTC is information that you add yourself manually. And this here then is EXIF, which is information retained from the camera, things like the exposure, the focal length, the ISO, stuff like that about it, what lens was used. So this is an old shot that I shot with a tilt shift lens, which is why you can see it's got this kind of blurred edges. Um, so I know by seeing that it was shot with this TSE 24 mil that I probably did do it in camera as a thing from add something as a preset later. So there's information you can see from this, things like your file name, the copy name, if it was a virtual copy. You can enter a title and caption, copyright information, which is, hasn't been added because I haven't added a metadata preset, uh, isn't there. And so you can see what date this was shot. It was shot in April of 2011, for example. So all of this information shows in the metadata panel, but you have other options for this as well. So what I would use generally is I would actually have it on quick describe. So it's just got the basic information here and I can get very quickly to the copyright information and all this kind of stuff. The creator information is actually pulling from the camera I had it enter into the camera directly. So I can add a title and I can add a caption which will be available throughout Lightroom from there and available on export. Other things that are here is large caption for entering captions because when you're in this model when you press return it lets you go to a new line whereas in the other ones it won't let you go to a new line you have to do an alt enter or an option enter at the same time to make that happen and um, so if you need to put in a caption you're better off doing it with this large caption option so like ptc this is information that's been added but as you can see i've actually put nothing in on this particular image here as well Let's say if I added this particular preset here, we can see that the copyright information gets filled. In this case here, it's actually 2011, so I'm just gonna make a change to that so that it's correctly 2011. My contact details would be here if I had entered them in the metadata preset, which you can see how to do in this video, but as I haven't, they're not here. Now you can also combine the EXIF, which is the camera information and the IPTC, so you've got way more of it available. So we'll see here some extra stuff here. Um, if I go for EXIF, that's just the camera information. So minimal is just literally very, very little. So just the caption and copyright information. Now you may want these whatever you want. So there's no DNGs and then all plugin metadata. So if you have used plugins, which are metadata plugins, and for instance, here I'm using an LR Instagram. So the hashtag is actually stored inside the metadata from the LR Instagram plugin. If you don't have the plugin, it's excellent. I will do a video on it soon. And um, so I have this plugin called Fashion Team that I wrote. And the idea with this is it was just to give me an opportunity to keep records over stuff that's going on in a fashion shoot. So I would have the name of the client that booked me. Now that client could be me. The name of the, the stylist, uh, makeup artist and hairstylist. So those are the main parts of the team. If there was assistance, the assistants come in there. Uh, if it's been shot for a particular publication, you put it in there and then you would put in the model and their agency. So if I've allowed up to six models in case you're doing large group shoots and then just there's an additional model ones just in case. And then what model usage you've uh, given and if there's a wardrobe credit to a shop, for example, like that or, or to a fashion brand that they go in there as well. So that allows you to store all of this information with the file. And um, so this is plugin metadata. So anytime you get a plugin that creates metadata, it will show up in this section here. 
uh, location is stuff um, that can be put in or taken from map, for example. And then video is if it's a video, it allows you to put in uh, video stuff directly because Lightroom doesn't pull any metadata information from the video whatsoever. Now what I would generally have this on is I would usually have it left on Quick Describe. Just allows me quick access to the title and the caption. Uh, that information obviously is searchable as well. So that's been a very, very quick look at the metadata panel inside of Lightroom. Uh, I will be getting the Fashion Team plugin back out again there. And the plugin itself works fine, but the problem is that it was put on the Adobe add-on site, which uses a particular file type that only works with Lightroom 5, uh, 4 and 5. And I've only just discovered that. So I've got to go fix it and make it available for everybody. So it will, it's a free plugin, so uh, anybody can have it and, you know, that's it. Uh, I might put it on uh, my website, which means I have to use FastSpring, which uh, will be like kind of a donation where, and I think it has a minimum amount, but I can't remember what it is. But we'll see. I'll look into it anyway. Folks, subscribe if you haven't already and give the video a like if you did like it. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, do hit the notification bell if you want to get notified of new videos. And folks, thank you for taking time to watch this and I will see you in the next video.